Hello everyone. Today we're going to do a quick unboxing and a first impressions video for Cospit Optimus 2. I purchased this from Banggood. It was just delivered today. So let's get started. So once I opened the orange packaging, uh, I can see that the smartwatch box is nicely secured and wrapped uh, in this protective foil. I'm going to open that up as well. Here's the box that the watch comes in. Uh, the specifications are printed on the back uh, along with the UPC. It's designed by Cospit and it's made in China. Let's open this up. So I had to cut through the tape here and here to open the box, but I don't think they should have taped it. That's just my personal preference. It would have been easier if I could have just been able to do this without having to cut through the tape. Here's the box and here's the watch. So let's open the watch. It is nicely protected uh, in this shell from shipping. Now let's open the watch. Uh, this is my first smartwatch and this is my first review. So I'm really excited uh, about trying this watch out. Let's see what else is included in the box. Okay, so it comes with a tiny screwdriver and a charging cable. Uh, that's pretty much it. And the watch is starting up. I'm going to see what's in here. Okay, so it comes with a thank you card and a manual. It's all well and good. So I don't see a a power bank or a portable charging station in this box. I don't think it's included, so you have to buy that separately. So let's move the packaging out of the way. And let's open the watch. Okay, so let's quickly review the specs. So this comes with a 13 megapixel rotatable flash camera. Uh, this is actually the first smartwatch to come with a rotatable flash camera. Uh, it is powered by Helio P22 MT67628 core processor and it's paired with a Pixart PAR2822 chip. Uh, that's just a low power Bluetooth chip uh, designed for motion data acquisition, uh, Bluetooth connectivity between the smartwatch and your mobile phone. So it comes with a 4 GB of RAM and 64 GB of ROM for storage. Uh, the Android version is 10.7. Uh, it supports Bluetooth 5.0. Uh, the screen itself is a 1.6 inch IPS display with a 400 by 400 pixel resolution. Uh, the battery size is 1260 milliamps. Uh, if you buy the power bank that adds another 1000 milliamps in total. Uh, this does support a nano SIM card. You can see that there's a SIM tray here. Uh, this is actually pretty cool because I can open it without having to use one of those SIM insert tools, so I can just open it. I don't know why phone manufacturers don't also do that. It's probably because the watch is pretty thick, so it allows us, allows them to uh, implement this design. Okay, uh, and also it supports uh, the US GPS and also the Russian and Chinese GPS systems called Glanas and uh, Beidou. Uh, the body itself is made out of 
a ceramic bezel with a plastic shell and the strap itself is made out of silicone uh, now let's talk about uh, network connectivity uh, this has the following network bands that you can see on the screen right now uh, out of which uh, band number 12 5 2 and 17 are supported by AT&T uh, and you can see the AT&T supported bands on the screen right now and also the T-Mobile bands uh, and here based on the bands that this phone has you're going to have uh, a better luck running it on the AT&T network than on the T-Mobile network uh, because it has more bands uh, that are supported by AT&T than T-Mobile. So as far as the features are concerned, uh, it comes with a heart rate, blood oxygen and sleep monitoring system. Uh, it also supports Face ID unlock, uh, just like uh, you know Samsung and other phones that support Face Unlock, including iPhone. Uh, and uh, it comes with uh, Play Store included. Uh, that's pretty neat because you can pretty much install uh, any app uh, that you wish to uh, that are traditionally not included in smartwatches. So of course I have to uh, connect to the Wi-Fi network. So this is the back button. Uh, so let's go back here uh, and I'm going to do a full review after using this watch uh, for a while so let's see if we can access the settings network and internet and I'm going to toggle the Wi-Fi connectivity the touch screen is pretty good even though uh, the screen is very small it's pretty sensitive and uh, I'm going to connect to the Wi-Fi network okay you can see the keyboard pop up for me to type in the Wi-Fi password uh, even though the screen uh, I'm of course entering a fake password uh, but it is pretty responsive uh, I see and I can feel the hepatic feedback whenever I press something so I originally had some concerns on how I would be able to type anything on this phone but this doesn't look too bad so I'm gonna go back I'm gonna go back uh, I've connected to the Wi-Fi network and now I can go back to the App Store uh, the Play Store and uh, sign into Google com complete the setup Okay, so while continuing with the setup, you can see that this button is pushed all the way onto the bottom right outside the dial of the screen. Uh, there's a way to fix it. Uh, in the settings, you can change uh, the display from a circle to a rectangle. So the rectangular display should be better suited for these kind of screens. Okay, so here's the Play Store homepage. Uh, it is very responsive. It's not that bad at all. I'm going to go back. I'm going to go back. So I'm back on the home screen. And you can see a nice live display in the back. That's pretty neat. So I'm going to swipe to the left and swipe to the left again. And here you can see... Uh, some of the fitness modes and uh, as I'm scrolling down you can see this little dark line on the right hand side uh, which gives me context on where exactly I'm at like for example here I'm at the end of the menu it's pretty neat I'm gonna go back and if I swipe up it shows me the pedometer and more metrics and if I swipe up I can see the time uh, the battery level the sim status as well as uh, the Bluetooth connectivity so this looks like a simplified Android uh, notifications menu that you would find on a typical Android phone 
And if I swipe to the right, I can see uh, a snapshot of messages. And in the settings, you have uh, options for starting the heart rate monitor, blood oxygen, the browser, the camera. So let's play with the camera a little bit. So here's the button to toggle between uh, the photo as well as the video mode. And also, you can pop open the camera. So here's the option for turning off flash. And that's much better. So this was a picture with flash and this is a picture without the flash. So you may need to use this toggle option uh, depending upon the orientation of the camera. So once you start using it, you'll get a hang of it. I'm going to exit the camera menu. Let's open the browser and do a quick speed check. Not bad at all. My S21 does about uh, 40 Mbps. I have a 300 Mbps line. You can see the screenshot from a direct wired connection. So this is not bad at all. I'm about 10 feet away from the hotspot. Let's try to open Google. And as you can see, uh, subconsciously, I'm a little bit afraid that I might mistype it's pretty accurate, even though the screen is very small and the keyboard is very small. Okay, there's a little bit of a lag there. I'm not sure why. Let's try opening up YouTube. I'm just going to hit enter and see which search engine picks it up. Okay, here's YouTube. Let's open this video. Of course, the Liberty Mutual ad visits us. <laughs> To escape, I'm gonna hit the back button. So as you can see, if I go back, uh, there's not a lot of sc screen real estate because of the 400 by 400 resolution. You don't get to see a lot of the screen here if you scroll down, because the video pretty much takes up most of the space. And here's the way to toggle between different apps that are open. I'm gonna go back. I'm gonna go back a couple of times and I'm gonna exit this. I'm gonna go back home. Now let's see if we can change the dial. So I'm gonna swipe to the left and go to desktop settings and then click on dial selection and here you can choose between different dials you can obviously download one but I'm gonna skip that for now
and also you can change the menu style so this is just linear and here you have a grid view and a circular view uh, I'll go with a hybrid of a grid and a linear view Uh, let's look at the file manager so obviously this comes with 64 gigabytes of storage and about 12 gigabytes has already been used by the operating system and have about 50 gigabytes available that's uh, pretty sufficient uh, there's one other smartwatch that comes with 128 gigabytes of storage uh, but 64 gigabytes is pretty decent because I'm not going to store any files on a smartwatch uh, let's open up maps also, the dial kind of doesn't do a lot of justice. So I'm going to turn on GPS and it's still thinking so since a lot of buttons are outside the dial it's a little bit difficult to do what I want to be able to do right now okay let me try to put this on. Also, I noticed that uh, since this is my first smartwatch, I can feel like this is a little bit thicker uh, than a regular wristwatch, obviously, because it has a freaking phone inside of it, uh, including a SIM card. Uh, so it, that doesn't bother me at all. And you can see the charging dots are here. I'm gonna put this on okay so there are two strap holders here uh, there is a way to enable face unlock or uh, you can configure that here I'm not gonna do that right now uh, it also comes with a manufacturer app store these apps are specifically tailored for the smartwatch and here i can connect to the phone and also allows me to control the music on my phone so i'm going to do that later and there's the watch face store Uh, basic optimization features and also set up a screen lock Who's the author of Harry Potter? J.K. Rowling wrote Harry Potter. So that was actually faster than the browser experience that I had earlier. Maybe it's using a different browser, so maybe I need to switch that uh, default browser with something else. But the voice controls are pretty fast. So I'm going to take off the watch. So closing thoughts. So I bought this because I wanted the functionality of a Android phone in a watch. So understandably, it's going to come with some trade-offs, uh, especially the challenges with accessing menus or user interfaces that are specifically designed for a phone. So when you try to fit 
a screen that's designed for a phone onto a circular dial, of course, you know, you're going to run into some problems. So I wouldn't blame uh, the manufacturer for it. Uh, there are lots of watches with rectangular displays. Uh, I've seen a watch with a large rectangular display. It feels like you are strapping a phone onto your hand. Uh, so that looks a little bit unnatural, but uh, the circular dial is good enough for me. Uh, hopefully, uh, the manufacturer is going to make some uh, software updates uh, to mitigate those issues. But the thing is that uh, those menus that we saw with the Play Store uh, and the browser, they are created by uh, Android, uh, by Google. So uh, the manufacturer uh, doesn't have a lot of sway in controlling uh, what uh, Google does to their Play Store. But I'm sure like uh, there are some optimizations that can be made. Uh, anyway, uh, this is a solid watch. Uh, performance is pretty reasonable. Uh, I'm gonna try on the network settings. Uh, I'm gonna put in my SIM card, play with it and see how it behaves, and also do a full review of the watch, uh, in, including performance benchmarks. Uh, but otherwise, uh, I like the build quality. Uh, it's not too fat, uh, it's not too heavy. Uh, it has uh, lots of memory sufficient to, for me to be able to run some important apps. Uh, and uh, the camera quality is not bad. Uh, I'm obviously not going to use this as my main camera. I'm going to, I'm going to use my smartphone for taking pictures primarily. Uh, but otherwise, uh, it's a pretty good watch uh, and you don't have to spend a ton of money for it. Uh, I spent about $180 on Banggood. So that's pretty reasonable compared to like $400 or $500 for uh, Samsung and Apple watches uh, so this watch has its place uh, in the marketplace uh, and if you're looking for a watch with full Android functionality you know, with uh, some limited trade-offs uh, which aren't too bad I definitely recommend this watch so thanks for staying with me for this unboxing and initial impressions uh, if you do like this video, uh, press the thumbs up button. If you don't like it, uh, please feel free to press the thumbs down button and let me know what I can do uh, to improve your experience for future videos. If you also have any tips or any other devices that you would like me to review, please post them in the comment section. I hope you'll all stay safe and uh, goodbye.